live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone, thanks for tuning in. First tonight, catastrophic flooding has caused more havoc on the northwest, with motorists left all but stranded because of damage to key infrastructure. Students were told to stay away from school and commuters are left waiting for hours after significant issues with the Cam River Bridge were discovered. Drivers take their place in the long line to access a key northwest gateway as the state's infrastructure woes deepen. A crucial pier on the old Cam River Bridge damaged by flood runoff. We had divers inspecting yesterday um, and we've seen significant scouring uh, around and under one of the piers. Motorists last night waiting hours to finish a journey that normally takes just 10 minutes. Chaos for commuters again today with some students told not to make the trek. Yeah, well the community are hit really hard on this because we have uh, school children going to special schools in Burnie and uh, look, this is just hopeless. The only alternative route, a winding one and a half hour drive southwest via Guildford. With fears for those needing emergency medical care, help may not arrive in time. Serving as the main entry point to the rest of the northwest, the Cam River Bridge is currently only open in one lane, leaving traffic banked up for kilometres. It left authorities scrambling to reassure travellers about when the bridge might reopen. Uh, I don't expect it to be weeks, I do expect it to be days, but I have to be guided by the engineer's advice on this. We're not in any position to cut corners on safety. That's but locals are calling for a second access point across the cam, not just a replacement of the old bridge. The region's mayor says he's been wanting the issue addressed for his entire career. But this certainly highlights what the, our Waratah Wynyard Council have um, lobbied all forms of government for the last 30 years to have an alternative bridge over the Cam River. Fuel, it's, it's a significant impost on people and people really need to understand uh, how this situation is going to be managed now going on into the future but also in the event that this isn't able to be rectified in a short period of time. That period of time still undetermined. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. Well, Hobart will reopen to cruise ships in just a few days as the industry sets sail here for the first time since COVID halted international travel. Their return is welcome news for local tourism businesses, many relying on the steady flow of passengers. A chance for these devils to shine. The tourist dollar helps keep Bonnarong Wildlife Sanctuary operating. COVID's impact on the cruise ship industry, however, had owners facing an iceberg. When we've been operating at times at 30% of our normal income with 69 paid staff, um, it's, it's a, a lot to recover. We are reliant on people coming through these doors to basically fund that. After years of stormy seas, clearer waters are on the horizon. Tasmania's cruise ship season returns next week, with Pacific Explorer the first to dock. Tasmania as a destination, our brand is very strong. People want to come to Tasmania. And they're so vibrant, uh, you know, the place comes to life and everyone's having a great time and people are crying, they're so happy to see uh, various animals. 69 port calls will be made, bringing around 150,000 passengers to the region and millions of dollars of economic activity. 21 will stay overnight, while 24 ships will visit Port Arthur. Smaller vessels, the expedition ships, home port in Hobart. So then you've got opportunities for provisioning as well, so you're supplying product. The Pacific Explorer will officially arrive here in Hobart on Tuesday. While the cruising industry's reputation took a hit during the pandemic, experts say early numbers suggest tourists are getting back on board this year. The ships are around, running at around about 80% capacity at the moment and they consider that full. But one bus is a full car park and that's what we've really missed is those five, six coaches a day. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Major gaps have been revealed in the management of COVID protocols across Tasmania's educational settings. The problems were highlighted during a public hearing into the government's response to the pandemic. Disability advocates aired their concerns on the lack of planning for preventing vulnerable students from contracting the virus. I'd like to hear the government talk about what their ongoing strategy is to mitigate risk for our most vulnerable students and saying personal responsibility in my view isn't enough. The state's workers' union also provided a statement pointing to a lack of preparation and confusion around what COVID cleaning resources should look like across campuses. I have been very clear with the Department of Education that the way um, the COVID funds were um, 
were rolled out um, could have and should have been done better. Mitty also heard from the Treasurer who detailed spending allocations that were dedicated to managing the spread of infection. Tasmanians have less than a week to vote in this year's compulsory local government election. Around 67% of electors have already posted their ballots. The Electoral Commission predicting a last-minute surge with around 50,000 envelopes still to come in. From the weekend, it's too late to put it in the post. To be sure to get your vote back, drop it into your local council. They've got a ballot box you can place it in. Polling will close at 2pm Tuesday. Those who miss the deadline can expect a $36 fine in their letterbox. Patrons have flocked to the Royal Hobart Show to enjoy another day of thrills and spills. Our reporter Brianna Boylan is live amongst all the fun. Brianna, what's been happening on day two? Kim, it's been another jam-packed day of festivities here at the regatta grounds with showgoers making the most of the clear skies before the wet weather rolls in for the weekend. Now the foot traffic has been a little slower compared to day one which saw around 20,000 people pouring through the gates but it doesn't mean there was any less fun to be had with thrill seekers taking to the rides while some tested their competitive edge in the sideshow alley and of course show bags and hot food on constant rotation. We spoke with some of the crowd a little earlier to hear all about the highlights. Just coming here with our mates and just spending time together, you know, enjoying the show, enjoying the rides. We had a look at the animals, really enjoyed the goats and we saw some guinea pigs. Tell me what it tastes like. It tastes like blueberry. The show wraps up at 10 tonight with a cracker fireworks display taking place at 9.30, meaning I've still got plenty of time to grab a Dagwood dog and score a front row seat, Kim. The local travel agency has made an impact on the world stage, winning a prestigious World Travel Award. Leading tourism body Skoll, honouring Hobart's travel with a cause for its efforts in promoting sustainability. The business has operated a number of projects ranging from protecting rainforests in Fiji through to helping the less privileged. Privileged. The focus is on volunteering, giving back to communities um, to leave behind a long-lasting legacy. We need to look after it, we need to respect it and Jane Johnson and her company are actively working to do that. Travel with the cause beat companies in Peru and South Africa to claim the title. The state's road network has become safer with the Midway Point intersection upgrade finally complete. Federal and state figures celebrating the project that falls under their $350 million South East Traffic solution. I well remember coming down past through this intersection uh, when there's a tiny little roundabout just outside the service station there uh, having to negotiate that. You've seen the replacement of the small roundabout with a genuine traffic controlled solution that allows a uh, large volume of traffic flow but also in a much more safe um, and effective way. The government now looking to duplicate the Tasman Highway to the Hobart Airport interchange. Prominent Tasmanian racehorse owner Rob Hammond is battling a common but widely unknown type of cancer and is now raising awareness. Teaming up with Taz Racing and Neuroendocrine Cancer Australia, the first Racing for a Cure event will hit the track tonight. Racing to raise much needed awareness and funds for an incurable disease. The inaugural Racing for a Cure fundraising event hopes to shine a light on neuroendocrine cancer. It's the seventh most common cancer collectively in Australia. Neuroendocrine cancers can happen anywhere in the body. They're predominantly more so in the gastrointestinal tract. Impacting around 22,000 Australians, including prominent Tasmanian racehorse owner Rob Hammond. My experience is a genetic. I had to do something. I lost a sister and a brother with the same thing. I um, just had a normal test and they said we've got to go further and I knew then on the black sheep of the family, I had it. Diagnosed in 2018, Rob has taken matters into his own hands, bringing the fundraiser to fruition to help those who silently suffer, offering a night out at the Mowbray racetrack for the Flinders Island Cup. Former Launceston and Longford Cup winner Glass Warrior also making an appearance as event ambassador. She's been a special horse to me and she's given me the will to fight on. Organisers are hoping to raise $30,000, which will be donated to Neuroendocrine Cancer Australia. Every bit helps us with everything that we do. 
and we run on the smell of an oily rag. Helping those who need it most, including 24-year-old Caitlin Bailey and her nan Lorraine. There's just so many people that have the disease, but it's very rare and very unknown. It's a really lonely time for someone because they feel terrible. They have symptoms that really don't point to anything. The aim of the race? To stop the nation and get the word out on the widely unknown disease. McKenna Bailey, 7 Tasmania News. An interactive device is improving local dementia patients' quality of life. The Tova Tafel projecting light and movement onto a table and reacting to the resident's touch. A range of games and activities bringing people with cognitive disorders together. They also have increased physical activity using this tool. It's amazing to see that technology and the surprise on their faces as a butterfly lands on their hands or the satisfaction from having completed a puzzle. One Care rolling out the technology across two of its facilities and encouraging other aged care homes to jump on board the initiative. Some familiar faces are on display at the Queen Victoria Museum and Art Gallery with the Archie 100, a century of the Archibald Prize, touching down in Tasmania for the first time. Unveiling a series of 98 nationally recognised works, the exhibition celebrates a milestone for Australia's oldest portrait award. You can't really overstate how important that is. Um, because of it, its lineage and being a 100-year project, um, audiences, generally speaking, don't get a chance to see exhibitions like this. So rather than a chronological look at the Archibald Prize, the works have been displayed thematically, looking at different aspects of the prize and the way um, society has reflected portraiture across the century. Launceston is one of eight national destinations hosting the exhibition tour. Doors will open from tomorrow until January 8. Good evening. Jake Doran's first one-day cup century has been the highlight of the Tigers' day in South Australia. Doran's unbeaten 105 and a half-century to Beau Webster steered Tasmania to a strong position. Not enough to win, though. The Redbacks chasing down the Tigers' total with 14 balls to spare. Before the Doran show, Tasmania showed signs of trouble. Ben McDermott was clean bowled. Then Caleb Jewell pushed a plum catch to short mid wicket. Jordan Silk showed hints of class. Oh, shot. Beautifully timed. Crashed through the offside. But his innings ended just when it started gathering steam. Punters needed some inspiration. That's where Jake Doran enters the picture. Doran goes. Sidekick Bo Webster, the supporting act. Hits it beautifully over mid wicket for six. Webster kept those in the old scoreboard busy as he set about rearranging the numbers. Whoa. Hit sweetly, and that'll be a half century for Bo Webster. Goes all the way. Doran went even further, making his first limited over century. Tasmania posting a total of 252. And the defence was bulletproof early on. Top edge, should be out first ball. Never seen anything like it. Whether or a false shot, Tasmania has struck straight away. Tom Rogers bagged the next three, including skipper Travis Head and Henry Hunt through the gate. He's straight through him. Jason Gillespie would have felt a little anxious with a runner ball needed in the final ten overs. But the Redbacks had revenge after losing the Sheffield Shield Clash Jake Lehman hitting the winning runs. Bang and hits a four and that's the game. The Redbacks win by four wickets. Tasmania's next match is in Launceston where the one day cup returns for the first time since the 2000s. Meanwhile at Blunston Arena, Ireland has knocked out the West Indies of the T20 World Cup. Batting first, the two-time world champions struggled to make runs. Brandon King, 62 from 48 balls, helping the Windies eventually make five for 146 from their 20 overs. Nailed it. Absolutely drilled it for six. Big side or not. Slightly with the wind now. Despite copping a few early blows to the body, Ireland's openers made a fast start in their chase. The Irish giving the local fans plenty of catching practice on the hill as they race to victory. Ireland chasing down the total with 15 balls to spare and nine wickets in hand. Tasmania froze in last night's Hockey 1 match against the Canberra Chill. The Tigers seemed to have the game stitched up when Jack Welch found the back of the net to go 4-1 up. It'll be Welch, drag flick, goal. But Canberra scored three goals in the last two minutes to force a penalty shootout. Jeremy Edwards desperately tried to save the day. To tie it up, Jeremy Edwards on the second go. Denied once, denied twice. Tasmania has one win from three games this season. 
Jack Jumpers guard Sam McDaniel is poised for a return to the floor after overcoming a rib injury. The playmakers hoping to bounce back into gear, eager to break into the starting five as the Tasmanians prepare to take on Perth at home. Returning to full contact on court with several weeks of rehab put behind him, Sam McDaniels ready to fire up. It feels like forever since I played a competitive game of basketball. Um, so yeah, just really looking forward to tomorrow night. I've sort of been able to build up the contact, build up my movement, my jumping, my landing, all that sort of things. Initially sidelined due to a rib injury, minutes on court could see the guard play his first game of this year's NBL campaign. Just the physicality and building myself back up to that level that um, I need to be at to, to get minutes on this team uh, is always tough, but um, I think I wouldn't have it any other way. The Jack Jumpers face a tough contest under lights at My State Bank Arena tomorrow night, going head to head with the Wildcats. It's going to be a tough challenge Saturday night. Like this team's confrontational too. They're playing a very similar style to us. Uh, and they've got a lot of talent sitting on that other side of the floor, so it's going to be a big test. Three wins in a row, boosting morale among the boys in Freen, getting their season back on track. This league has always been about who gets better over time. It's never about who starts and plays well in October or November. And uh, the teams that handle the tough situations and some adversity as the year goes on will be the ones that you know finish the year and play in grand final series and playoff series. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. And with the Bernie 10 on this weekend, our Friday flashback is returning to the year 2000 when a former newsreader stole the show on the northwest coast. 2000's race went off without a hitch despite fears of technological catastrophe in the new millennium. Entering the year 2000, Australia and the world was on edge as the impending Y2K bug gripped the globe. $12 billion was spent to repair the nation. There was even a national coordination centre. Of course, it was a fizzer. The only glitch affecting mobile bus ticketing machines in South Australia and Tasmania. There were no glitches though in that year's Bernie 10. One man enjoyed a brief moment at the front of the pack, but he was quickly swamped by scores of Tasmanians pounding the pavement. A breakaway formed at the turn, then there was one. Dual Olympian Sean Crichton from Canberra winning by three seconds. I thought well, I'll just put a little test surge in and see if anyone will go with it. Victorian Susie Mickelson took out the women's title and in the Battle of Southern Cross, Steve Titmus edged out his rival on the sport desk Rob Fares over the tough 10k distance. Another successful year for Bernie's big race, still going strong well into the new millennium. A great event, Kim. Bernie 10 this Sunday. You got to be, be there? Be? Not me. Not me. <laughs> I'm going to miss this year. Another year. Thanks, Another year, mate. I better start training, eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. A bit late now. <laughs> Good evening. 24 degrees in Hobart today, Launceston 19, 17 in Devonport and Burnie 15. 27 was the state's maximum today in Strawn, 24 in Grove, Flinders Island 21, Lowhead and Friendly Beaches 18 and 17 on King Island. Extensive low cloud can be seen covering the north of Tasmania today with patchier cloud in the south. Further out, convective cloud with thunderstorms can be seen over the eastern states, while cloud associated with a front is over the bite. Tomorrow, a trough will cross Tasmania as a low passes to the southeast. A strong high builds well south of the bite. And northeast to northwesterly winds tomorrow 10 to 20 knots, although 20 to 30 knots about the east during the morning. And there is a severe weather warning in place for heavy rainfall for parts of the northwest and central plateau forecast districts, and a strong wind warning for the far northwest coast, east coast, and southeast coasts. A flood watch is also in place for the northwest, north, northeast, Derwent and coal catchments and a minor flood warning for the Meander and South Esk rivers. Rain and 19 in Hobart tomorrow, Maydina and Oatlands both rain and 17. 21 and rain in Launceston, 19 in Devonport, Lyoweenie, heavy falls and 14. Burnie reaching 19 tomorrow, 17 in Strawn and Marawar. And rain in the east with St Helens and Swansea both 20 and 18 in Orford. And the UV tomorrow is high across the state with sunset at 7.40pm. On Sunday, showers more frequent about the northwest. Showers extending throughout the day on Monday, increasing about the northeast. And on Tuesday, showers statewide with easterly winds. 24 in Perth tomorrow, rain in Adelaide and Melbourne, Sydney 25, 23 in Brisbane and partly cloudy and 37 in Alice Springs. And it's currently cloudy across the state with Hobart 21, 19 in Launceston and Devonport 17 and Kim a hint of summer yesterday but the rain's back tomorrow.
personally, I think we've had enough rain for the year. Thank you very much, Chelsea. And that is all your news for now. Thanks for joining us tonight. On behalf of the entire Seven Tasmania team, it's good night.